Hello there! Today we're going to throw a bunch of blood oranges into a blonde ale to make this. I actually don't know if this is a blood orange, but I did use all of them in the beer, so probably not. Start this batch by collecting 4.8 gallons of RO water. This is our full volume before losing some to the boil and to the grains. Speaking of those grains, today I'll be using a fairly simple grain bill. The goal is to let the blood oranges do most of the talking in this beer, when I'm not talking about it at least. With everything milled, it's time to add the grains to the kettle and start our mash. I'll be mashing at 150 degrees for about 60 minutes. And then it's time to add the water additions, or the mash additions since I forgot to add them to the water. At the conclusion of our 60 minute mash, we'll pull out the grain basket and let it drain back down into the kettle. With everything draining, I'll set my anvil foundry to boil and then start the process of recirculating my wort through the top of the grain basket. For all the dogs watching, don't worry, I'll pull some grains out and spread them out on a baking tray. I'll be making some dog treats with these later, but made sure to spill a little bit for some dog treats now. With our foam inhibitor hard at work inhibiting foam, we'll start the 60 minute boil process. Now's a good time to cut up our blood oranges if you have not done so already. I'm using about two pounds and then I'll store the actual fruit in the freezer for later use. The boil additions for this beer will start out with 0.25 ounces of magnum for our bittering additions before adding in the 150 grams of blood orange peels. Basically just the peels from the fruit I stored in the freezer a second ago. And then finally, 0.6 ounces of Huel Melon hops. With the boil finished up, I'll start my chilling process with my immersion chiller, and then finally transfer the wort into the fermenter. With the wort in the fermenter, it's time to pitch the yeast. Today I'll be using Imperial's A01 House, really my favorite choice when I'm trying to get that house flavor. A couple of quick shakes later to mix up some oxygen into our fermenter, and I'll take a quick gravity reading. The fermentation schedule for this beer is pretty standard, but with a fruit addition and a temperature ramp afterwards to clean up a little bit after. Speaking of that fruit addition, taking those two pounds of blood oranges, I'll squish them up and then throw pretty much everything into the fermenter. I took care to not add too much of the rind in, but if it adds too much bitterness, I'll just call it an IPA. A couple days later, checking the final gravity, we ended up at about 5.4%. Then it's finally time to transfer the final beer into the keg carbonate it up to about 2.5 volumes and pour a pint. If you got any sun hanging around this early in the year, take this beer out and enjoy, as long as it's not too cold. Most ales that you see with fruit, specifically oranges, don't add straight oranges to the fermentation of the beer. A lot of the times it's just orange zest or orange peels during the boil, but I really wanted to get almost Tropicana levels of orange out of this beer, and I think it mostly went pretty good. There is a ton of orange flavor in this beer. There's not quite as much color as I wanted, but it is still a little bit darker than a standard blonde, I think. There is a little bit of bitterness that tastes like the rind of the orange, but it's definitely nothing off-putting and honestly might be contributed to hops if you didn't know that it was a blonde. Speaking of hops, the Huel Melon hops are a little bit hidden in this, but I think in a complimentary way. Overall, I wanted this beer to be fruit forward, but it's fruit forward, fruit middle, and fruit backwards, so definitely a fun example of an interesting fruit in a beer. Cheers! Cheers.